Hello! I was meant to be uploading a cookie recipe video today, which I was going to film yesterday after work, but Lee and I had a new sofa delivered yesterday and it ended up taking quite a lot longer than I anticipated to put together. So I didn't have time to bake yesterday and I don't really have another opportunity to bake in time for a video this week. So the cookie recipe will be coming your way on Tuesday next week and today I'm doing my September book haul which I had thought was a bit more reasonably sized this month but actually it's not. So let's get into it. My first book that I'm going to mention is actually my current read and the Thoughtful Book Club pick for this month and that is The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett which is a story of multiple perspectives. The main storyline follows Desiree and Stella who are twin sisters in a small southern town called Mallard and they hate it there and so they decide to leave when they're quite young. And then later on in their lives, Stella has decided to live life as a white woman, and Desiree has decided to marry as black as she could. They're both black but white passing. And we then follow Desiree's perspective and then Jude, her daughter's perspective, and I think that we're going to follow Stella's perspective and her daughter's perspective, but I haven't got that far yet. I'm only 122 pages in, so I'm about here. I'm struggling with it so far, I have to admit, but this isn't a book review video so I'm just gonna move on. Next up we have Interview with the Vampire by Anne Rice which as the title would suggest is a story about a vampire being interviewed and telling his life story, his story about becoming a vampire and living life as a vampire and I actually have already read this one, I read it for my reading challenge this month so I will go ahead and link that there for you. Another book that I picked up also for that reading challenge was The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is a Russian inspired fantasy story that is incredibly atmospheric. I'm not going to tell you what the plot of this one is because really the focus is on characters and atmosphere and if you like that kind of story then I'm pretty certain you'll like this one. While we're on the subject of that reading challenge video I might as well show you the other two books that I picked up for that. So the first one was The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon which is a middle grade story about a character with autistic spectrum disorder and Asperger's and it's amazing, read it. And the other was Lives Other Than My Own by Emmanuel Carrère, which is a memoir in which the author, Emmanuel, talks about the stories he's heard from other people about think about shared life experiences essentially so the the main story well the two stories that he explores in this memoir are the devastation following the tsunami that happened in Sri Lanka on Boxing Day in 2004 and then that was followed by the death of his sister-in-law to breast cancer. So it's him not so much exploring his experiences with those events but talking to the people around him and their experiences of those events. The other books that I read for that particular reading challenge I either already had or just got on audiobook. The next book I'm hauling then is The Reckless Afterlife of Harriet Stoker by Lauren James. This was a pre-order. It is Lauren's most recent book and it is a paranormal fantasy about Harriet Stoker who in chapter one dies an untimely death and wakes up as a ghost surrounded by 
other ghosts and there's lots of adventure and great characters and it's really really fun. Another one I've hauled this month and also read this month, The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. This is the group book for the Adventures Through Wonderland readathon that I am participating in. This one follows Susie who wakes up one night to find someone laying train tracks through her living room and a train comes through that is a postal delivery train to impossible places so she stows away on board and goes on a very exciting adventure and I loved it. It's middle grade and it's just great. Next up a book that I haven't yet read we have Hurricane Child by Kaysen Calendar. This one is one I'm hoping to read this month. It's pretty short and it follows a character named Caroline who was born during a hurricane which means that she's unlucky but then a new student starts at school and they become friends and they explore their friendship but also go looking for Caroline's mother who has disappeared. Next up we have Kiki's Delivery Service by Eiko Cardono which is just, I picked it up because it's just such a beautiful copy. It's one of those fabric-y hardbacks with the, the artwork printed straight onto the hardback and it's just so beautiful. It is the book that inspired the film Kiki's Delivery Service by Studio Ghibli, which is a film that I really, really love. I love a lot of Studio Ghibli films, but that is one of my favourites. And so I really wanted to give it a read. And when I saw that this beautiful copy had been released, I just couldn't resist. Next up we have this book is Anti-Racist by Tiffany Jewell. This is a non-fiction book about anti-racism. Anti this one's actually for... I don't know if it's young adult or if it's like the younger end of young adult bordering on middle grade. I think it's around that age range and it's all illustrated. It's illustrated by Aurelia Durand and I've just heard lots of really good things about this one. The reviews for it are very positive. It's very, very short and I don't know, it just felt like it was a really good introductory type text to anti-racism and although I've read a lot of anti-racism stuff online I really just wanted a a book to read and I wanted to start with something fairly basic and easy to absorb because I'm not so great with reading non-fiction so I thought that this would be a really really good one it was out of stock for quite a while because I guess a lot of people thought the same thing but I was really glad to finally be able to get my hands on it. And then finally we have the Ink Heart trilogy by Cornelia Funk. So this is Ink Heart, Ink Spell is book two and then Ink Death is book three. Now I'm going to show you these a little bit closer up because they are just absolutely stunning. I read Ink Heart for the first time when I was maybe around 14 I want to say and at that time I didn't realise that it was a trilogy. I read it because the film had come out and I wanted to watch the film but I wanted to read the book first and I actually only found out that there are more books in the series maybe a year or so ago so I did want to reread the first one and then read the rest of the series but then these editions came out and I just I knew I really wanted to collect this particular set because it's just so beautiful and I saw it in an independent bookshop that I went to a few weeks ago at all all three books together and I felt like I just wanted to buy all three of them. I also bought This Book is Anti-Racist and Kiki's Delivery Service from that same independent bookshop which is something I really like to do. I do love to support independent 
bookshops and I do really want to reread the first book and continue on with the series. If you haven't heard of it, it, it is a translated work, it's translated from German which I don't think I knew that either, but it follows a character named Meggie and she and her dad travel around because her dad works as someone who restores books and he has a love of books and she's inherited that love of books but her mum is not in their lives anymore and Maggie doesn't really know why that is and then she learns that her father can read things to life out of books and he can also read things into books and they end up getting dragged into a book called Inkheart. It's called Inkheart isn't it? I think the book is called Inkheart, I'm not sure but anyway her and Mo, her dad, disappear into this book to try and rescue her mum and that's all I can really remember about this story. I'm not 100% sure if this is middle grade or a young adult but I think that it's middle grade so I'm really interested to revisit this particular series and I've just remembered that there was one other book that I bought from this shop that I haven't grabbed so let me go and grab that. Okay and the last book that I hauled this month is this collection of Winnie the Pooh stories. So this is the Christopher Robin collection, Tales of a Boy and His Bear by A.A. A. Milne. I don't know if you know this about me but Winnie the Pooh is the first book that I can remember reading. I did probably read books before it but I just can't remember them because I was so young. This is the first one I have a vivid memory of reading from cover to cover, not this exact edition although I do still have that edition. But I've just been wanting to get a, a new copy of Winnie the Pooh with lots of lovely illustrations in it and I saw this one in that same independent bookshop and I just decided, you know what, I'm going to pick it up. I think this has got additional stories in it that I haven't read before so I probably will just go ahead and read it at some point. I know it's like, it's a children's book. It's not for a nearly 30 year old woman but I don't care. I love Winnie the Pooh. It's so wholesome and adorable so I decided to buy it. There we go. And precarious stack. That's it. Those are the books that I bought in September. Hopefully I won't be buying as many books in October, although I do have The Invisible Life of Addie Larue on pre-order, so I'll definitely be getting that one, but otherwise, hopefully I won't be buying too many. And that's it for this one. Thank you so so much for watching. If you like this video and want to see more like this from me, then do think about hitting that subscribe button, and I hope to see you here again soon. Thanks, bye!